Yeah, hi. Welcome to the Flutter Factor. Uh, this show is all about learning Flutter and Flutter development. Uh, I am your host Hasnan Tai, and I have two amazing speaker with me. Uh, the internal speaker of Frostake, and I have uh, Ashwin Gopinath. Uh, I will let Ashwin to introduce himself, and then uh, Frost. So hi everyone. So my name is Ashwin Gopinath. I am currently working as a software engineer at PhonePay. So at PhonePay, I am actually part of the iOS team. So I am currently working on a feature for iOS and. I am really excited to be here. All right. Well, for me, I am Shaikh Afar, and I am a software engineer one here at Geekends. And currently, I am working on an open source package, which allows you to create gauges. And we still have many things planned for it. All right. So, uh, Ashwin, let me know uh, before we move on to the uh, actual topic. Please let me know how you started your Flutter journey and how it's going on. So before Flutter, I used to work with uh, work with native Android, and in 2019, early 2019, I attended a talk by one of the GDs in Flutter, Drubal Shah, and during that time, I came across this open source technology that's pretty new, and they called it Flutter, and I I was interested in that, and and I got into it and started building stuffs, and I was so happy about it, and since then, it's almost like four years now, and I'm still part of Flutter community. I still contribute to the community as much as possible. And that is something where I started my Flutter journey, and here I am right now. Uh, how about you, Afroz? So I basically started with UI UX design. I like, like you could create screens and all that. And then gradually I moved. I wanted to develop those screens which I am designing. So I came across Flutter, and I loved the developer experience. I loved everything, and I'm still a part of Flutter. All right, that's great. Uh, talking about my journey. Uh, I started Flutter development when Flutter was in beta in 2018, and uh, yeah, before that I, I used to create a YouTube videos uh, for mobile development. Uh, it was mostly uh, cross-platform, which was a well-known framework at that time, which was called as Ionic. Ionic, yeah. Yeah. So Ionic was the framework which I used to do a YouTube videos, but then I came with a videos on my timeline uh, on the YouTube. Uh, there was a one person who is a well-known person right now in the Flutter community. I mean, you have guessed it correctly. It's a Pawan Kumar. Yeah. So uh, Pawan has been producing those videos, and I was like, okay, let me just try install and work on it. I just installed, and it was pretty much amazing. And then you know, uh, I just kept around six months learning Flutter, and then I started producing video over over there as well. And still, I am a part of you know community and the Flutter development. Well, uh, that was great knowing both of your journey uh, uh, about Flutter development. Uh, so let's talk about the today's topic. Yeah. It's about uh, a reactive system, right? And uh, how do we achieve reactive system into a Flutter domain? So uh, let us first tell about what exactly a reactive system is and how we can achieve in Flutter domain. So the Flutter reactive system is a set of principles and uh, basic structures you can follow. In order to create a user interface that depends on the data, so whenever the data changes, the UI updates. Uh, you can imagine like a reactive system to be like a DJ for your UI. Whenever the DJ changes the beats, that is whenever the data changes, you have the UI update. Oh, that's a great example. I mean, how about you, Ashwin? Would you like to add so up something? I completely go by what um, Afros talked about. I mean, as an end user, whenever I start doing some actions on the app, I really want the immediate feedback. Even if it's not allowed, the app should tell me that you're not supposed to do it. So that is something I uh, consider as a reactive system. Like whatever action you perform on the app, you should get an instant feedback. Or let's say if any data change in the application, the data could be internal or it could be coming from an external source. At that time also, the app should change the system. I mean, the reactive way should react to it. So that is something I believe it's a reactive system for Flutter. Right. Uh, thanks for uh, for an amazing introduction about you know uh, reactive system into a Flutter. Uh, adding more into this is uh, you know when it comes to a reactive system or just giving a brief on what you said is just like uh, it's a paradigm mm -hmm. where we input something and then things get processed and quickly we get. Uh, an output on the screen, yes. right? That's what a reactive system is. Uh, but as a Flutter developer, I would give a great example of a reactive system is the uh, the hot reload. And yes. uh, I mean, you as an end user expect things to be updated on the screen quickly. But 
uh, if you are a Flutter developer, you have that thing as in the development environment where you just change something and on the spot you can get it on, onto your screen. So I, I mean, that was a pretty much good thing to have into a development environment into a Flutter side. And I guess that is, that is, what, that is why the Flutter is being loved most Absolutely. right now. Right, because it makes development process much faster mm -hmm. uh, compared to the native native things. Maybe native you, you are working with the native side, so yeah. you know the downfall of uh, what, what is the pay, what is the pain you have exactly. to uh, wait for reinstall and yeah. getting the update on the screen. It's like you need to restart the entire application to see a text change in the right. So I mean that that's where uh, uh, Flutter is making more waves these days, okay. right? So. Uh, let's talk about uh, you know reactive system. How we can bring a reactive system into a Flutter, and what could be or what are the well-known packages uh, which are doing great thing uh, in terms of reactive system. So let us know your inputs on you know uh, how we can bring it into reactive system into. So the first basic example that I'll I'll suggest anyone to get started with is the inbuilt value notifier that you get in your uh, Flutter framework. So it's like value notifier has everything you need to build a basic reactive system for for your application. So it's like it has a value, it has a listener. Whenever a value changes, you can actually trigger the listeners. The listeners could be zero, it could be more than zero listeners. So that is something I would say get started with. First of all, it's better to have a reactive programming experience. Like get the theory perfect, get your foundations right, and understand what reactive programming means. Then get started with the basic one that is value listenable. Then you can go with stream builders. Then if you want to go with the actual state management packages like block, provider, there are also solutions for that. So that is something that I would suggest anyone to get started with. Right. So since you talked about uh, a state management, yeah. and that's a very hot topic into, yeah. into a Flutter community, mm -hmm. uh, you see a lot of debates on, you know, maybe if you just post a random, a random tweet, you yeah. get uh, many uh, replies into your yes, thread right. that I, I use this, this is better. Even if you go on Reddit, you see the same. Mm -hmm. Or uh, if you have any live stream running on, the people are fighting about yeah, this is the best state <laughs> management technique. So. Uh, since the reactive system uh, comes in inside uh, state management, I mean, uh, state management is directly proportional to the reactive system. Uh, and you also talked about the uh, no value notifier, mm -hmm. right? Uh, most of the time what happens, people does over engineering, exactly, right? Yeah. And uh, we always end up using, you know, well-known packages into the community, okay. even though we don't want it into yes. our application. So, what's your thought on 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 over engineering part? So, first of all, I would tell uh, talk about like the right state management that like you asked. So, uh, choose something that is less awkward for your uh, requirements. So that it that itself talks about over engineering. So you don't want to use a missile to kill a mosquito over there. So it's like choose a state management that fits your requirement. So this like uh, let's say the set state or a value notifier can do your work of your reactivity that it needs that you need in your application. So you don't have to go with the block package or you don't need to go with providers. So choose something that is right for your requirement, and that choice comes from experience, and that is something I'll suggest everyone. Like start using or start building something out of every package you know, and that way you can get to know uh, which one is the right. Uh, package for the right requirement. So that is something that that's how you choose a particular state management technique. Agreed, completely agreed. So uh, since we're talking about state management, let Afros talk about, uh, let Afros have an insights of what are the packages which could be more helpful uh, in, in reactive system when it when it comes to Flutter. Okay, uh, as Gopinathan said, uh, we don't need to over engineer things. Also, we also know that provider is just a wrapper for change value notifier and all these things. So if you want to have some things for reactive system, uh, the two of the main packages that come to mind are block and rxdart. Mm -hmm. With block, you can control streams of data. Like block is basically a business logic component where you separate the business logic and the design logic. And once you have your business logic, you can send it as a stream to the UI. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever the data changes, the UI changes. And you can take this a bit further by using rxdart because rxdart has uh, custom methods to modify streams. Mm -hmm. Like you can filter, you can reduce, you can map. So 
Rx start and block and apart from that the stream API of Flutter. That's the main thing you use before the state management thing. So we have the great stream controller of Flutter. Once you use it, uh, you can go ahead with block or Rx start and you can have a great reactive system built completely in Flutter. Right. Thanks, Afroz, for letting us know in detail about Rx Dart and Block. So, just summarizing about Rx Dart and Block is uh, a block is kind of separation of your business logic and a UI screen where you where you keep uh, your business logic separate from the UI and then update your UI uh, by using those streams to and sending it to as an events to the to the uh, widgets or the UI uh, to update the screen. Similarly, if you have uh, many types of screen or many type of uh, uh, categories of stream coming in uh, you might use rx dart to have those extra filters on top of yeah. it right so that's a that's a great input now since we talked about uh, state management uh, we we all know uh, the very again a very hot topic into a flutter uh, flutter community is making your screen responsive and what i think is uh, the responsive responsive screen also comes into in a reactive system because when you minimize or maximize your screen or you just uh, change the size of your uh, of your d uh, device uh, maybe let's say a mac os app you just resize your screen or maybe you have inside your mobile app you just change your uh, orientation yes. right in that term uh, the screen has to react in no time i would yes. say right yeah. so uh, I, I guess the responsive, uh, the responsiveness is also fall under a reactive system, right? So, what is your thought on you know if you have if you have used or implemented responsive uh, in, in in building responsive UI into a Flutter? What what widget you would like to have or what uh, what package you would uh, recommend us to go ahead and use it? Okay, so talking about responsiveness, the first thing that comes to my mind is that Flutter is a declarative framework. That means if you want to update a particular value on the screen or any value in the widget, you need to rebuild the entire UI. So sometimes, so everyone thinks th this way that let's say uh, you maximize your application from a small screen to a larger screen, you think that rebuilding the entire UI will fix it. But it's not something like that. Let's say you have a big screen and you have a lot of components in that. It's not easy to rebuild the entire UI. Sometimes rebuilding might create another additional network calls and it could cost a lot of bandwidth for the user. So one of the best solutions that I've used is you can go with the basic ones that we come with the uh, Flutter framework itself. You can use Media Query, you can use Expanded Widgets and everything. So you don't have to go with the third party uh, packages if your requirements are very less. And there are third party packages like um, I've used Screen Utils and Sizer Widgets and everything. So they have done most of the work for me. And even Layout Builder helps a lot when you're working with um, uh, medium-sized screens and everything. Right. That, that's a great input, uh, Ashwin. I mean, I totally agree on, on again, uh, people do over-engineering. Uh, uh, I, would, I, would I would like to give a one simple example over here is that I have a habit of uh, reading open source project and just to dig into what they have written to achieve uh, what I see on the screen. Right. So uh, recently, few months back, I came across uh, uh, a G Skinner uh, open source repository where uh, they had an animation of a swipe where when you swipe on your email, it just get deleted and the deleted email turns into a particles which fade away gradually. So, I mean, that uh, animation was so much eye catchy mm -hmm. and I was like I just need to see how they have they have done this okay. and uh, I was thinking okay maybe they have used set state or they have they might have used animation builder okay. to to make all these things mm -hmm. uh, but I was amazed to see that there was no set state okay. uh, there was no uh, there was no uh, I mean animated builder or anything like that but they have just used uh, a simple uh, value notifier okay, to update okay. the screen. So, I mean, again, uh, it's we always follow what uh, community is following yes, or we sense. always do uh, what others are doing yes, just correct. because those people has done it. So we have to do it. Uh, I mean, that should not be that way. Uh, we should we should do we should put our own research work. Yes, and uh, as a tip, I was I would like I would like to give to the audience as well as you guys is 
uh, to to read the open source projects mm -hmm. who are doing great in the community yes. uh, to know uh, how exactly they have they have built things right uh, that that will add a very great input to your development part as well right uh, so of course let us know uh, you know as as a newbie into a flutter development uh, how bad you have been using all third party libraries when it comes to a simple slider or when it comes to a simple state management or when it comes to you know a responsive ui yeah so when i started flutter as everyone does i also had the habit of adding a new package for everything because if you add an external package for example for a slider the external package will provide you with a great ui will provide you more functionality but in turn it will increase your app size since he talked about the uh, sliders like we have many widgets available uh, yeah. into into our flutter framework itself exactly. where we don't even need to have that slider package exactly. uh, if we bring in uh, let's say for an example we we bring in a package which is giving a ton of functional functionality let's say if the package is giving 20 functionalities yeah. but we might be only using one or one two, or two. Yeah. Uh, which will ridiculously increase the app size yeah. which is which is not needed i guess yeah. you can put two or three days extras in, in extra to develop uh, develop your uh, functionality what you are going to extract yeah. or you can just go ahead and copy and paste the code what they have already been yeah. doing into and from the app control over it. our development process like whatever my uh, experience in terms of development says is if you want to if you want to build something mm -hmm. uh, first just go ahead and read whatever that package yeah. is been do in doing good in the community Correct. just read that package mm -hmm. and try to improve it when you are implementing mm -hmm. right okay. that will make uh, your implementation different from them mm -hmm. and yes. uh, of course you will be better in the performance when it when it compares to them since we are talking about our own implementation yeah. uh, uh, when we come back again on the over engineering and uh, state management Correct. i think uh the state management package is again they are built using uh whatever flutter framework is being providing yes. right yes. so there is no new thing coming or a native thing coming into a state management but it uh, but it's again whatever dart and flutter is providing using that only we are building our state management yes. Yes. packages yes. whether it could be a block or an rx dart or yes. it could be a river pod yes. right so uh, i mean we should also think on how they have built uh, to make those re or they have built a reactive system mm -hmm. to bring into our flutter flutter framework well uh, talking about the over engineering uh, i have that one important point is you know sometimes we don't need uh, an external state management yeah. Yeah. the 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 set state would work yes, yeah. right would, yeah. so the state the stateful widget could do a work maybe uh, your thoughts ashwin on yeah so talking about that there is two things you need to know when you're choosing the right solution for your reactivity so uh, in flutter we have two types of state that is one is ephemeral state and the other one is app state so ephemeral state is a short lived state that that could be something like the index of a page view that you are swiping through it could be the current index of a page view it could be the current index of a bottom navigation bar it could be a particular time period in a complex animation so it is something short lived we don't need for that to persist a longer time so that is called an ephemeral state and when you talk about app state it could be something that persists through the entire app sessions it could be something like a user data it could be something like you need to change the bottom navigation and bottom bar index from any other screen so that is something you need to maintain or persist throughout the app session so that is something we know call it as app state so when you are talking about ephemeral state in order to bring in reactivity to that state you can go with a basic solution like value notifier or set state or streams that is one of the examples so for ephemeral state you can go with the basic example that the flutter framework provides but when it comes to app state that is something where you need to put your mind in. you need to think about the requirement of the app state or how you need to change the entire session or how you need to work with that app state for that you need to think of a reactivity solution it could be something like you can uh, if the requirements can be done using block you can integrate a block for that or it could be if any solutions out there like any state management techniques out there can fit the requirements you can go with that for the app state so that is something that is how we come up with the solution for any requirement in our application right 
so now, uh, since we talked about estate management, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to have an input from you guys because since this is a hot topic, we uh, we need to know. I mean, I I especially need to know that both of you guys love which package when it comes to estate management. So, <laughs> what's your thought on 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 having a package? So we already know the estate management libraries are already crowded. Like there's a new estate management like every month. And uh, for me, one of my favorites is Provider and uh, Riverpod. I used to use Getex. So, yeah, that's it. Riverpod and Provider mostly. Uh, how about you, Ashwin? So, I love value notifiers. That is something that has done all my requirements. I mean, whichever requirements I used to have, I know they fit properly in that. And apart from that, I have used Block extensively in my previous company. So, Block and value notifiers is something that I would go with. Right. Uh, Adding my thoughts, um, as a newbie, I was always uh, a provider guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I always use provider into 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 the client apps what I have built mm -hmm. so far, or the freelance app what I have built so far. Uh, but then as I, as I said, like we have to level up by reading the uh, open source repository, and you said value well, notifier does okay. most of the time uh, uh, your job. So I have been always uh, thinking when I want to have reactive system get into my uh, my app development process. Then I think whether will this be a good solution or just value notifier will do a job, right? So uh, this is going to be a, a debate for for everyone and this is going to be a never ending debate that yeah. which state management <laughs> technique is is good but yes uh, it depends on your requirement mm. uh, yeah. like summing up uh, summing up as your requirement mm. and your knowledge as well like yeah. if you don't know how value notifier works mm -hmm. uh, of course you are you, you have to use a third party library yes, maybe yes. you can go with uh, a getx mm. because newbie loves it uh, you can go with provider. Uh, so yeah, uh, having your own thoughts, uh, but you also need to know where those things will affect, yeah. right? Yeah. Your development process as well as once you ship your app, how you're going to have your uh, things running into into the production, yes, right? Yeah. So having a production uh, ready app with third party libraries could be a plus or could be uh, you know harmful yeah, so yeah. it depends on on how uh, we have been implementing things mm -hmm. so uh, with that i guess uh, we have been talking about reactive system uh, we know how we can now we know how we can bring it into a flutter domain uh, we can we can see about block we can learn about block we can uh, talk about the rx dart uh, what Afro's mentioned. We well, now we know the difference between what Block is doing and what RX Dart is doing, yes. right? Uh, so with that, maybe this is how we can bring in the uh, reactive system into a Flutter. And uh, clearing things over here is reactive system is not just uh, a state management, yes. and it's not just limited to a Flutter. Uh, again, it's a paradigm. So uh, reactive system is again involved into your Java, JavaScript, React Native, right? So this is just a paradigm, and uh, those paradigm is been followed by this well-known, uh, well-known third-party libraries or the packages, uh, Block, RX Dart, and providers, and Riverpod, and the n numbers of <laughs> the the third party. But again. It's not just a state management. Uh, it could be your responsive UI, right? It could be, uh, you know, just a simple slider. Uh, basically, whatever updates your screen becomes a reactive, uh, reactive yes. system, right? So, uh, thanks, Ashwin, for joining us today and giving us a valuable input on uh, reactive system and how to bring that reactive system into a Flutter. So, sure, thank you so much for inviting me, and it's always great to be a part of this community. Well, uh, I, I would. I think the audience will love to have you again in the show. Uh, thanks, Afros, for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it was a great pleasure meeting Ashwin and having a conversation with you. And I, I, I love the conversation we had and uh, the, the never-ending debate <laughs> topic we had. Thanks for joining in. Uh, we will be back with a new Flutter Factor show with a new speaker, with a new topic. 
I'm your host, Hasnan Tai, signing off. Thank you.